Many opinions that Raptors fans had about Pascal Siakam before trading OG Ananobi have certainly switched up by seeing what the team now looks like with Emmanuel Quickly and RJ Barrett involved. But do Raptors fans really want to see Siakam in a different uniform this season before the trade deadline? Let's get into it. Welcome back, everybody. This is Amateur Hour Sports 2, the second channel in the Amateur Hour production network for additional Toronto Raptors content and videos just like this, where we can react to some fan opinion based on a video from the main channel. We can go through additional Raptors content. So if you like what you see from today's video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for consistent uploads on this channel pretty much all concerning the Toronto Raptors and in this particular one it's kind of a follow-up to that main channel video that I did where I spoke about Siakam and whether or not I thought that he should be traded by the Raptors what those trades could look like I talked about how I think that trading Siakam would be the best thing for this team going forward I went through specific examples of teams that could have interest in trading for him and what those trades might look like as well and ultimately it came down to me thinking that the best trade option would be the Indiana Pacers if they're interested. You could get Jarris Walker, you could get Buddy Heald, you could get Obi Toppin, all three of those together for Siakam. Jarris Walker's a really nice fit here. Buddy Heald's salary comes off the books in the season. For the time being, he's a very good shooter. Obi Toppin, a little bit of a sweetener. Obi Toppin hasn't been as good this season as I thought he would be. And even if you're in the Ben Matherin camp, you could place Jarris Walker with Ben Matherin, which I wouldn't do, but perhaps you would do but this obviously sparks some conversations and sparks some debates about the fan base and what they want to do with pascal siakam at this point obviously it's not their call but everybody has their opinion including myself so i asked the community do you want to trade the player because it seemed to me like after the og and an ob trade that okay time to commit in this direction we're going to build a young team pascal siakam's got to be the next one on the chopping block for this team right well now that we've seen what siakam looks like with emmanuel quickly rj barrett specifically with the additional spacing for this team some fans are starting to pump the brakes say hold up look how good this team looks look how good pascal siakam looks with the spacing gear look how good these floor spacers look with pascal siakam kicking out to them and now fans are starting to say well maybe you shouldn't trade him so i was a little bit surprised when i ran the poll to see the results as such 52 percent of the people who voted here i have 2.5k votes a decent sample of the Raptors fan base the people that are in the amateur sports community this is the best way to gauge fan opinion for myself and what we have here 52 percent say yes trade him 45 percent no say no don't trade him extend him instead and for some reason two percent of people said not only should you not trade him you should let him walk for nothing at the end of the season for whatever reason so 52 percent say trade him 47 percent say do not trade him I don't know what happened to the other 1%. I guess there was some rounding of numbers somewhere from the YouTube side of things. But what we get out of this is that Raptors fans are pretty divided on this topic here. And I think it's surprising because at the start of the season, my opinion was don't trade Siakam. You want to win as many games as possible this season. You have a high likelihood of extending the player. Don't trade him. And I felt like I was in a pretty big minority of Raptors fans who said don't trade him. And the majority of fans were saying you should trade him. Well, now, obviously, we're still in the majority saying that, yes, trade him, but it's pretty much 50-50 here. If we increase the sample size, we might get this poll very close to 50-50 on Raptors fans who think they should that they should trade him and Raptors fans who think that they should not trade him. So I, th I found that to be extremely interesting. But I think a lot of the change here stems from how good the team has looked since the trade has been made. But just how good has Pascal Siakam looked with the involvement of R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel quickly. Let's take a look at Siakam. That's a very small sample size. It's four games. Let's take a look at what he's done the last four games. Now, there was that monster haul against the Cavaliers where he had 36 points. But in the four games, he's averaged 23.5 points, 5.5 rebounds, 4.3 assists. And I think that the telling statistics here are, first of all, the field goal percentage being where it is at 62.5 on average. He's shot above 60% in three out of the four games since the trade went down. Part of that is that his three-point percentage is climbing up, and he had a monster night from three against the Cavaliers where he goes five of eight from three. But he's shooting 66.7% from three in this span. He's shooting 63.6% .6 from the field. He's averaging 23.5 points. We're certainly seeing Siakam playing some great basketball. Now, I'd wager he's been, been playing great basketball regardless of this trade. He's shooting on the season above 50% from the field. It's like 52%. He's shooting 
way above 50% on twos this season. He's averaging about 58% on twos this season. So he was playing good basketball regardless of this trade, but the game seems to be coming a whole lot easier to himself. But perhaps where I see some reservations, where I maybe have some pushback on his involvement right now is that, yes, he's putting up numbers, he's doing so very efficiently, but I feel like he could get the ball a little bit more. Like, look at the field goal attempts here. 20 against the Cavs, yes, but then 14, then 11, then 11. I feel like that's not really enough for a player of Pascal Siakam's caliber. What's also interesting is the usage and distribution of the ball because if Siakam's not shooting enough, who's getting those shots? Well, in the four-game sample size that we have, R.J. Barrett actually has the highest usage among Raptors players at 24%. Now, what's skewing that is that he was phenomenal against the Warriors, and he got a ton of usage out of that because he was playing so well, so fair enough. That might skew it in the small sample size. But second in usage is Emmanuel quickly, and third is Pascal Siakam, what's also a little bit surprising as Scotty Barnes is fourth, but these guys are very close together. And we see from the field goal attempts over the last four games as well that Emmanuel quickly has the most at 14.5. He's been really putting up threes, but Barnes at 14.3, Siakam's at 14, Barrett is at 13. So right around, all four of these guys are right around each other in terms of overall usage. I would expect RJ's would fall off a little bit if it wasn't for that humongous game against the Golden State Warriors. So it's quickly Barnes and Siakam really sharing the ball. And some people this season have had a little bit of issue with the Democratic offense the Raptors are playing, that everybody's got to get their touches. Like, we're so desperate to get away from this so-called selfish basketball, when in reality, like, like sometimes we need to be more selfish to play a little bit more ISO-heavy. This trade and the floor spacing has certainly helped us achieve the goal of not having to do that as much, and the team has looked tremendous in this stretch of games, 100%. But what this might be attributed to, this distribution of field goal attempts used in stuff, like, Teams are very prepared how to play against Siakam and Barnes. A lot of doubles come their way, particularly for Siakam on the inside. And now they have real shooters to kick the ball out to. They have players that they can kick the ball out to who can profit off of the advantages that they create. So naturally, there's guys open and better guys open on the outside. Perhaps there's a bit more of an inclination to make these passes, although we saw Siakam's assists haven't exactly been... Uh, above his season average. He's averaging five assists this season, only 4.3 in the four games so far with these players. But for Siakam to still be putting up these numbers with a bit of a lower role than perhaps he should be getting is, is remarkable and showcases Siakam's talents. And it showcases maybe to other teams his ability to play as the second guy, how good he could be as the second guy for your team. So Siakam's playing well. The team looks really good. All of this I understand on the trade front, but I guess the question of should the Raptors trade Siakam or not, it comes down to if you want him to get traded, you want a complete reset here and like really focus on young players and building for the future. That's the camp I'm in. If you are in the camp of, of not trading him, then you're likely in the camp of let's just be as good as possible win as many games as possible, Siakam is going to help us do that. It's pretty surprising that the OG and Nobi trade seems to have made the Raptors a better team. That's surprising to me. I don't think the same will be the case for Siakam. If Siakam is traded, I expect the Raptors to be worse than they were before making that trade, unless an, like a, an astonishing return comes the way of the Raptors. Like if the trade is Jairus Walker, it's Buddy Heald, it's Obi Toppin, and like a pick from the Indiana Pacers, the Raptors are worse. The Raptors will be worse than they were previously. They'll be maybe more fun, but they will be worse. Like, they just won't be as good as they were with Pascal Siakam. That's okay with me. Really start to cater this team around Scotty Barnes. Really start to put shooters around him. Jairus Walker as, like, a 3 and D power forward be, like, a really nice fit over there. But, like, whoever the, whoever the trade may go down. If you're working on fixing defense, if you're working on fixing spacing, and working on bringing in young players, you're doing all these things... I think the trade makes sense because I'm not sure it'll be super easy to trade Siakam once he signs a max contract because that's the contract ultimately he's going to come down to getting. So I just, I, I just truly, I'm, I'm shocked at the discourse and how much it's changed in the week and a half since the trade, where before that it felt like everybody was saying trade Siakam, not everybody, but the majority, the grand majority was saying trade Siakam. Now it's like 50-50. Fans are divided. Raptors fans don't, as a collective, don't know what they want here. Me personally, 
I'd be okay if they didn't trade him and they extended him. But my preference is, once again, prioritize the future, bring in young assets, see what you can get out of Scotty Barnes with the best fit around him possible. Like, Siakam, I'm not saying he's a bad fit, but if you put, like, the best fitting roster around Scotty Barnes, how good can he look? How good can Emmanuel quickly look? That's okay with me. If the goal is keep Siakam, keep the flexibility, win more games, I love Pascal Siakam, so I won't mind seeing him more often in a Raptors uniform and still seeing him in a Raptors uniform, but you let me know your thoughts. What do you think the Raptors should do with Siakam? Should they trade him? Should they extend him? Should they apparently 2% say let him walk for nothing? Give me your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below because that's all for me today. Make sure you check out my other channels, my main channel for Raptor-specific content, my Clips channel for the best highlights from the streams from this channel. There is a video that you may like as well from the main channel where I spoke about Siakam, first of all, and you can subscribe to the channel you're on right now, Amateur Sports 2, for more Raptors content. See you next time.